Gurudev, the bull who symbolizes dharma is always facing Shiva. Could you please speak on the relationship between dharma and the Shiva consciousness? If you see, when your dharma means that which keeps you straight, that doesn't put the guilt in you. Whenever you feel guilty, that means you are moving away from dharma. So when you are in your true nature, there is no guilt. See? For example, when a scorpion stings, it doesn't feel guilty. I think it doesn't feel guilty. <laughs> because that is its nature. But if you hurl a bad word to somebody, later on you feel you cannot handle it. You feel guilty about it. That means that is not in your dharma. Are you getting what I'm saying? That which makes you comfortable in your element, you are in it, that is your dharma. And dharma only leads you to Shiva, the infinity deep within you, the silence deep within you. And when you are in silence, or when you go into the depth of your being, only dharma can come out of it. Only you'll, you'll see when you come into action, there is only dharma. So when you move from Shiva, what you feel is uh, the symbol of righteousness, dharma. Yeah. Gurudev, I have been very truthful and it has led me into trouble. Is it okay to lie sometimes to be safe? <clears throat> I have said so many times, skill is needed even in your expressing the truth. There is a beautiful couplet which in India people learn when they're in the schools. I think it's in the uh, primary, after the primary school, they teach it. They, they used to at least those days. It says, Satyam Bruya, tell the truth. Priyam Bruya, speak pleasant. Na Bruya, Satyam Apriyam. Don't speak unpleasant truth and don't speak pleasant lies. This is the ancient path. Esha Dharma Sanatana. The ancient path is say the truth and speak sweet. Don't say sweet lies and bitter truth. Do you get it? So be skillful. There are ways to express. There is a nice story about uh, a king and an astrologer. So there was a very famous astrologer. The kings usually are in anxiety and they always want to consult astrologers. You know, sometimes they lose their confidence or, or too much uh, pressure on their head. They don't know what to do. So they call an astrologer and consult him. So they, the king called the most famous astrologer. And the astrologer saw his horoscope and said, my dear king, what, do I, what can I say? All your family members, everyone will die before you. You will be the last one to die. The king got so angry and so upset, he put the astrology in the prison. But this news spread like wildfire in the whole community. But he had a smart disciple. Sometimes disciples come to save <laughs> the master. So he had a smart disciple. He said, okay, I will go and talk to the king. He said, so the king welcomed the second astrologer, is a disciple. He saw that. He said, wow, wow, what a great chart you are, what a great horoscope you are. 
The king eyes got lit up. Hey, tell me, tell me what is that? He said, nobody in your whole family, nobody ever have such longevity, such brilliance. And you will live like no one else. <laughs> king got very happy, please. Because he told me, you will live for 100 years. Nobody in your whole history has such a long life. And he gave him a lot of gift, and then he asked him, what do you want? He said, you know, the person whom you put in the jail was my teacher. Please relieve him. <laughs> it's the same thing. One who said, you know, everybody will die before you. The other one said, you have long life. Nobody else has so much life like you. That is what is called the skill, you know. In the name of truth, sometimes we can become very rude. In the name of righteousness, we pour out our, you know, intolerance and negativity. Who is bothered about your righteousness? You may be righteous, but you should have the skill to convey that. That's why any conflict, I call it as the worst act of reason. War, W-A-R, worst act of reason. You talk to both sides, they will up, they will sound perfect. If you talk to one side, you will side with them. You talk to the other side, you will say, hey, correct, this person is saying is correct. You will side with them. It's not just the logic. We have to see the reality beyond what appeared to be a logical conclusion. Yeah? And that needs skill, that needs intelligence, that needs sharpness of observance, observation. Otherwise we see everywhere, you know, this conflict. Mm, yeah. I know. <laughs> Me too. Mm. Gurudev, mm. in the popular movie Kantara, the deity of a region chooses a person as its instrument. Is there a deity for each of us? What do they do and how do we feel their presence? No, deity means good energy, divine energy. Okay, this universe is filled with wonderful energy. So, uh, in the West it is called Archangel. Everybody has an angel. So here in India it's called Ishtadev. You have your Kuladev. Every family has a deity. Every individual can have a deity. Every village is called Gramdev. Every village has a particular uh, form of deity. You know, it's a, it's a fascinating area to move in. It only acknowledges that there are greater forces which are in control of the whole world and whole universe and all life on the planet. That's it. We think we are in control? No. We are not in control. We are, the whole universe is has a great hierarchy and great system in which everything functions. Just for example, take the most mundane thing. How different herbs impact different parts of your body. Take milk thrishal, it's a herb. It affects the liver. It doesn't affect heart. It doesn't impact any other part of the body. Take amrut, for example, giloya. It impacts the uh, immune system. And you take bail, for example, Buddha, it impacts the stomach and the intestine. So each fruit, each flower, each herb or leaves has connection with the different part of our body. That's how Materia Medica got developed. Materia Medica is extracting from the herbs only, right? Chemical, and you process it so much that its original thing is not there, then it, uh, anyway. 
you isolate a particular substance from the herbs and then you make it a medicine. Ayurveda takes it holistically. This is the main difference between the allopathic drugs and the Ayurveda. Ayurveda, what does, what does it do? If it is basil, it takes the whole basil. And the impact, you know, is there and without any side effect. But in allopathy, what we do, we extract only that particular thing and we take it. It is necessary. Allopathy is also necessary. At times, that has its own uh, benefit. Mm -hmm. So everything in the universe impacts everything else. Is a fact. So, but you know, when you become hollow and empty, when you meditate, there you find everything, everyone, everybody, all the spectrum is present there. So when you are uh, chanting the mantras or when you are meditating, in there all the devas are present in that space, beyond the inner space, the, the silent space, inside of you. Called Richo Akshare Parame Vyomani. The Richas or the Vedas come from a space which is beyond the inner space. The ultimate inner space. Esmin Deva Adi Vishvi Nishid in which all the divine energies are present. They are housed there. So if you don't know that, if you have no access to it, you become a seeker. If you know it, you become a wise person. <laughs> and you have access to the inner silence, then you are wise. That's what it is. And if you are not meditator, simply listening to chanting and these things doesn't make much uh, impact. It has some impact, but not much.